What is up, YouTube? Midwest Tube Review here back again. Dropping another video tonight. Kind of stacking them, stacking them up, I guess. Gotta get that content game up, you know? So I was just on a live stream with Jay Young. And uh, if you don't know who Jay Young is, you must be sleeping, so. Um, but I was on a live stream with him and we were, he was talking about, you know, various things, you know, his traditional live streams, but we got on the subject of hammers and uh, ball pings and dead blows and uh, bronze tip hammers, etc. cetera. Learned something about that tonight. And I was thinking, you know what? Um, I just got myself my very first hammer. I got a set of dead blows coming uh, here pretty soon, hopefully. Um, but I got myself this 24 ounce snap-on hammer uh, part number, blah, 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 blah. what is the part number on this thing? There it is. Um, HBB D24, 24 ounce uh, ball peen hammer. I thought it was a good um, weight and a good size hammer for what I would t traditionally use it for. Now I've got some of our other hammers, uh, you know, that I can use, and we'll kind of talk about that. I also have some of my truck. Uh, in my uh, road box, uh, but obviously it's in the, out of the truck. I'm not going to go outside and grab it, but I, I thought I would grab what I got. So the question is like, what makes a good hammer a good hammer, right? Um, I see that there's a lot of companies out there. There's a new brand called like Ox or something like that. I saw them at Lowe's. They seem to be um, jumping up pretty quick. I've seen them on Amazon. Uh, there's other companies like Tecton. I think Tecton now offers a USA made hammer, which is supposed to be something similar like to snap on. Uh, there is a slight difference in terms of how it's designed, um, but snap on, you know, one, I guess a lot of people probably don't even know how snap on hammers are made. And I have like the cutaway. I need to bring that and probably do a follow up video to this. But what I've learned is that with snap on hammers, I don't know if it's just a if it's this one or if it's all of them, uh, but they have uh, the ones that have shot in them, let shot the um, steel shaft or whatever that's on the inside of the hammer doesn't actually connect with the head. It's independent or it's free. So that way, when you strike, the vibration stays within the head. The inertia that is created from the swing stays in the head. All that energy transfers to the head and it does not transfer back into the, hand the handle which means you get far less vibration than you would with a traditional hammer. So um, when you look at some of the other ones I've got here, this is a uh, blue point. Uh, let's see here, where's the blue point? Yeah, that's a blue point, which is basically snap on. This one here is a, what is it? Um, 48 ounce one. Uh, it's got the wooden handle. So you imagine when you smack something really heavy with hard with that guy, all that energy that you create on smacking the substrate with this head is going to, some of that energy is going to come back down into the handle. And subsequently you get things like this where it broke. Um, so I have to get that guy warrantied out at some point in time. Um, I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to replace this myself. This is going to go back to snap on, let them take care of it and so on and so forth. Um, I also have, um, another, uh, blue point here. This is also blue point. This is a 24 ounce, um, which is essentially this guy here. Although this does feel a little bit heavier, maybe that's because of the wooden handle. Um, and then we have, I believe it's like a 16 or a 12. Yeah, this is a 16 ounce one here. Um, I think it also had a crack in it. No, maybe not yet. So she's still good. The 24 is still good. So uh, I guess, yeah, the what makes a, ham a good hammer a good hammer? I guess maybe it's because of the construction, the, the work that goes into it in terms of how they design it. Snap-on's got a great design. If you've ever seen a cutaway, um, it really explains uh, in detail how the hammers are made. Uh, and like I said, having that, that, that bar... Um, that is in the handle, which gives it a strength and rigidity, but at the same time minimizes or almost virtually eliminates the vibration that you would feel back in your hand that translates back in your hand. That's, uh, that's always a plus. I don't know how some of these other hammers, hammers are. The, uh, like I said, the Tecton brand, and there's other ones. Um, Jay Young did mention buying a trusty cook hammer. He said the trusty, hook ham trusty cook rather hammers are very similar in terms of how they look 
uh, and they look they they appear to be good quality. And I know Trusty Cook, Trusty Cook has been around for a long time, and I've heard great things about their hammers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cutaway from my buddy Jerry, so that you guys can see more about how Snap-on hammers are made. I'll borrow that from him. But at the same time, I will try to find a trusty cook hammer that is similar to what you would get from Snap-on. And then we are going to do a little bit of a comparison in terms of how they're designed. A lot of the trusty cook information will probably have to be pulled off on um, being on the website. So hopefully they have that information. Whereas with the Snap-on, like I said, I have a cutaway. I can use that and I can use my engineering brain and I can tell you what I think about that. Here's a dead blow. I like this one here. Um, I, know I had an older version, which I really liked the design of it. Snap-on basically mimicked the same um, profile or body, if you will, for all their hammers. But I had an older one, which was a little bit cooler than this one. And when I warranted it out because I blew the cap off of it, uh, they gave me this guy here. So nonetheless, I still like it. It's a great uh, dead blow hammer. It's got two different durometer caps here. So you can have a little bit harder with the gray, a little bit softer with the black. And then you can pick you can pick and choose your different colors. And I know um, there's another brand here. Uh, this one here is what is it? Uh, Nupla. Nupla is also a very popular brand. And uh, with the Nuplas, I don't know about the Snap On ones, but I assume that you probably can. But I know with Nuplas, you can buy different caps, so you get the different hardness durometers um, for these different caps, and then you can use them for a variety of different applications, right? This is also a really, really great hammer or dead blow. It's got a um, fiberglass handle. Um, I know that those fiberglass handles can split and break. They're supposed to be a little bit more durable than your traditional wood handles. Um, but, you know, if not used correctly, you can uh, break that. Now, what's interesting enough on this one here, um, Nupla, um, they, they got a fairly small shaft or fairly small handle here. Um, so they must be fairly confident that this fiberglass is going to last. And it does at, offer a lifetime warranty, not a limited lifetime warranty, but a full lifetime warranty. So, and these are really expensive. I've seen Nuplas online. I know the caps are fairly expensive. Like to get a whole set, you can buy like the whole kit of these. And I want to say it was like upwards of $70 or more at the time that I saw it. It may be different, maybe higher, maybe lower. Uh, but at that moment in time, it was a little bit high. Um, and I, I kind of steered away from it. I believe um, Yoda Doug sent me this hammer. I, I believe he was the one. Um, I don't know if I bought it from him or he just gave it to me. I can't recall. But uh, but then you get like the brass hammers. I learned something about these today. Um, there's brass and there's bronze. Obviously, one is harder than the other. Um, and Jay Young actually had a snap-on hammer that was actually bronze, not bla not brass. Um, and so that's very interesting. I think, I think bronze is a little bit softer than brass. Um, and so, uh, this one here, I think this is, this is probably brass. I don't know what this one is. It's probably brass. I'm not sure. Um, but I assume it's probably brass. But anyway, um, Tecta makes a pretty decent hammer in terms of like something that, you know, every a DIYer can use. I know I, I normally I stay away from using that terminology, relegating DIYers to using a certain brand or, or quality of tool. Um, but, you know, a lot of guys, you know, hammer is one of those things where a hammer is essentially a hammer. Um, you know, you're not for most people who are especially home mechanics or shade tree mechanics, they're not going to be banging on a hammer every single day, whereas a professional auto technician um, is going to probably use their hammers, um, you know, two, three times a week, if not every day. Um, but someone like myself, I, I don't think I've ever used these here, or if I have, it's been very minimal. I think I used this when I was working on my OBS truck and I use this one quite often. Um, a lot of times I'm using it when I'm doing body work, which is where you see the well splatter and things like that. And then this guy here, I use fairly, conf, uh, fairly often as fairly often as well. I do have the, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, Harbor Freight, the orange that everybody and their grandmother has. I have a set of those or a few of those. They work fine, but I'm trying to up my game. But I guess let me go back to my point. A uh, DIYer or home mechanic, shade mechanic probably doesn't need to go out and spend a ton of money on these hammers. You can pick them up at fairly decent prices every once in a while on eBay, but it's, it's really difficult. And so you got to kind of you know, keep an eye out for it. But um, I would not say, I would, I would say if you can find one for a decent price, uh, certainly pick, your, pick yourself up one of them. 
Uh, there are, are, are other brands out there. Like I said, Nupla is one of them. Uh, I know East Wing is another one. Um, so you can find some fairly, really good American-made um, hammers out there without having to spend an exorbitant amount of money. Um, so I guess what makes a good hammer, number one, is the construction. Number two is the materials that they're using. Construction being number one, number materials being number two, um, and um, just the, the, the overall layout of it. And number three is knowing how to use it and when to use it. They make var various hammers with vari varying weights um, for specific job applications. So make sure that you're using the proper hammer um, in terms of weight and design for what you need. And do not be using a claw hammer for an automotive application. So like I said, I'm gonna do some more research on hammers in general. I'm gonna get the um, uh, Trusty Cook Hammer uh, per Jay Young's recommendation. We're gonna do a video on that. We're gonna get the cutaway for the Snap-on Hammer. And we may pick up a couple others just to kind of see and do a comparison. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can do in terms of um, testing. Uh, like I said, a hammer is a hammer, um, but we, we can look at it's the design, we can look at the materials, and we can look at the construction. So hope that video is a little bit informative. That's kind of a, a late night video I thought about producing real quick and dropping out there. No editing, just straight what it is. And uh, let me know what you guys think. What kind of hammers do you guys use? What do you look for when you buy a hammer? Uh, what is important to you? What is not so important? How much money are you willing to spend on a good hammer? Uh, leave it in the comment section. I will respond to the comments. Uh, and, be sh and make sure that you comment because I'm going to use the comments that are generated in this video. And I'm going to share those on the next video when we talk about hammers a little bit more in depth. All right, guys. I'm It Was To Review. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you click that like button. Make sure that you leave a comment. And if you're not already doing it, make sure that you guys are following me on Instagram at Midwest underscore tool underscore review. All right, guys, catch you in the next one. Peace.